Hey everybody, it's Ziz here. Welcome to Crowfall Insider, your weekly news source for all things Crowfall. Now, we did actually miss last week, but that means we have even more news this week to talk about, and there's a ton of awesome stuff. We got to look at the Confessor and the Knight animations. This is what they're working on in game right now. You can see fireballs and flame walls and shield slams and knockbacks and all the sort of awesome stuff. We're going to take a look at that. There was also the August Q&A by the developers, and they talk about espionage and how guilds will work and if they're still using the voxel system tons of information it was a 20 minute video we're going to look at there they also give us a look at the ui how the design is turning out what it's looking like in game with all the buttons and placement and some other iterations and their goal as far as what they want the ui to look like there's also a founders update where they talk about new upgrade options you have and also swag that's right you can buy t-shirts now which are going to be pretty sweet looking and last but not least is some techno mumbo Jumbo. If you like to see the technical side of things, how the animations work, the programs, all that stuff, and a whole lot more, let's jump right in. First up was this confessor footage they put out last week, and you can see her throwing fireballs, and she's super flashy, she has the fire coming off, and some pretty sweet animations. They talked about that ability where she holds the book out and closes it, looks sweet, there was just a dash she did there. Um, now, a couple of people are complaining because it looks a little kind of herky-jerky, and uh, some of the animations, there's a few hard stops, but you can tell during the animation, in the middle of the animation, it's super smooth and polished looking. It's just in between the animations, starting and stopping running sometimes it looks a little weird but remember i mean you're super close up on this character you're just looking at it um you're not playing i bet it looks and feels a lot better when you're actually playing but this looks amazing i mean for a kickstarter game for a game that uh i mean look at that like she goes sliding across there and then right before the slide and she kind of leans back and really cool and this is like the first i mean they're working on this right now it's not like this is polished and been out for a year i think it looks pretty great it's super flashy. I'm worried what's going to happen when there's uh, 50 confessors on the screen. It could get a little crazy looking. But uh, pretty sweet. You can also see a little bit about the fireballs. That's a charge up there for a meteor. And trying to hit people who are moving and dodging and sliding around. Uh, you know, it, it looks really awesome. It looks fast paced. But I can see where maybe some of the uh, range targeting could maybe be a little bit difficult. I don't know. I think it looks awesome. It makes me want to play Confessor. I mean, the armor looks awesome. The book looks awesome. Um, and this is the first iteration of it. It, it. it looks great. It looks great compared to other games that are out now, compared to other Kickstarter games. And this looks uh, pretty pretty darn awesome. We also got the knight here, um, and the knight looks pretty sweet too. Not nearly as flashy, but he does have a cape. I don't know why. I love capes. I think everybody might be able to use a cape, but look at this shield slam. He grabs the shield, slams it down, um, and... I don't know, I, I'm kind of worried that maybe as a melee player, like, these abilities are kind of cool looking, but compared to the Confessor, like, you look at how cool the Confessor is, and then it's like, you know, is this nearly as cool? I, I don't know, but you're a super cool knight, you got armor and everything, um, hitting people. Now, it looks like you don't see this guy moving and attacking at all. Like, when he attacks, it moves his character forward a little bit, but he's not actually moving moving and attacking at the same time which they talked about doing that having animation locks and the reason they want to do that boom and there's the slam right there the reason they do that is because they said it looked bad the concern i have is as a melee player if i'm chasing you and you're kiting me you're running away if i stop to attack you you're still running away so you're running away while i stop and slow down and attack you and you run away so then i gotta catch up to you again and then i attack and you run away and that's my concern because i've seen that in other games that had the same sort of system but i mean this ability here looks amazing that was his iframes where he sucks him in and then he slams him down um it looks really good i'm super excited they're working on the legionnaire next of course we'll see all the other archetypes in due time um but I mean, just the animations, how smooth it looks, how fluid it looks. Again, there's a couple little kind of jerky parts um, between where the animations connect. But overall, for a Kickstarter game that has just barely started development, I think it looks, and this is a game I want to play. I'm not, I'm not one of those people who's like, oh, if the graphics sucked, I hate the game. But there's like some graphics and animations that look so bad, it makes you feel like, I don't want to play it. This doesn't do that at all. It looks really, really good. 
Next up was the huge 20 minute Q&A video we got from Thomas Blair and J. Todd Coleman answering questions from the forums for August. And this is 20 minutes, I think this is the longest video we've done. They answer a ton of questions. Definitely go check it out. Some of the highlights I thought, um, they talk about espionage. Someone's asking how that'll work. And then you can literally infiltrate another guild and I mean, you know, take their stuff. You could maybe even kill them, you know, behind their back when a battle starts. You hear about these sorts of stories in E where these massive battles happen and people betray people and it sounds amazing and I think at the end of it all they said I think it was J. Todd Coleman said the espionage will be important and they want to support it now they're not going to go out of their way to like focus all their energy and resources on it because most people won't want to do it it's going to be a small part of the game but they still want to let it happen which I think is pretty awesome but they also talk about how one account will be tied to one guild so all of your characters on your account will automatically be part of one guild. So if you want to go join another guild, you want to infiltrate someone else and try to backstab them, you may need a second account. You may not be a part, uh, you can't join your own guild, but you join the other guild so you can infiltrate them and then you know, you're know you hanging out with your guild, you're kind of outside the party, maybe you're talking to them in TeamSpeak. So you know, they talk about how you're gonna be able to find a way to do this, um, but because of the way the system works and he talks about it for like two or three minutes, um, it's easier game side not to facilitate this huge, massive sort of engineering, like making it work people will figure it out already and they want to let people do it which is really great there's also a question about voxels are they still going to have voxels in the game are they using it um and they are still using voxels which i some people were concerned about because we haven't heard a lot about it since the kickstarter and that's because they're working on it it takes a lot of time and they're currently using it for destruction so they haven't started on the harvesting part of it yet like you know gaining ore and stuff like that but they're working on destruction so these keeps and stuff like that um, they can't show it to us quite yet, but uh, Thomas Blair said that it looks really great and by the end of the year we're going to have something really concrete and solid that they can show us. Um, there was also a question about iframes where the knight jumps up in the air and also the confessor can get iframe powers. This makes you immune to damage and someone asked can you like run through other players and they said yes you're going to be able to move through other players. Now this is pretty huge because if let's say you're a confessor and you get surrounded with physics you literally can't get away but this sort of iframe power not only does it make you immune to damage for a few seconds it will also let you run through players uh, to either get out of trouble or maybe you can run through maybe a front line of enemies they put their tanks you run right through that tank wall now you're in the back of their line and you can start blowing people up you may not get away but that's something that I would probably do also they talked about how being the first person into the campaign world because um, the question was are they gonna have campaigns start at different times time zones so people in Europe and people in America and people in Australia what if a campaign opens and it's you know they're sleeping and so they want to stagger them they don't know the times yet or how many campaigns but they also talked about they don't want the first person in campaign to have this huge advantage just because you're there you know five minutes before everyone else or an hour or two before everyone else you're not gonna have this sort of insurmountable like you know snowball effect where you're just stronger than everyone because you got the first loot that happened um, obviously if you came in like weeks afterwards you'd be a little bit disadvantaged but remember because your gear degrades because you can die because there's looting it, you're gonna be have a chance to catch up so you don't have to you know wake up at three o'clock in the morning when the server opens so you can be the first person I mean it would still be fun but you don't have to do that every time the campaign worlds happen they also talked about last but not least I thought was really great talking about the time to kill and how they wanted to be a little bit longer in about 40 seconds with not using any like defensive abilities if you're just attacking someone flat out it takes about 40 seconds to kill them and so if you add defensive abilities and movement and blocking and all this sort of stuff stuns that time to kill is going to stretch out a little bit longer um and then what about assassins though how do assassins get to do that and the basic idea is that assassins have a big hit opener but it is not a one hit kill it's not a one shot they never want you to be able to just push one button the person dies and you're done but they do have sort of this big strong opener
So you start with a strong over, it takes a big chunk of their life away, but then for the rest of the fight, you're not quite as strong as the other person, right? So you don't do as much DPS as another DPS class, but because you have this big opener, it kind of evens it out so you have a chance to fight, which is great. It adds a different sort of playstyle. You don't just run up and do as much damage as someone else. You have to strategically use your openers and look for people who are low on life and burst them and hit them and then try to get away. And it's that sort of in and out uh, sort of playstyle. So really great to hear because, I mean, nobody likes a one-hit kill. It's not fun for anybody. But there's a ton of awesome updates. It's 20 minutes worth. Go check it out. Next up was Billy Garretson, and we've seen him once before in another video. He's the guy who's making the UI, which to me is actually hugely important. It doesn't have anything to do with gameplay or balance or abilities, but the way you interact with your character and with the game is hugely important. Bad UI, you notice. Bad UI, you're taking like six clicks to do something when it should only take one click. It's cluttered and takes up the screen and it looks bad and it looks, all this sort of stuff. So UI to me is super important. And this this video they talk about sort of the iteration of UIs. This was a first iteration they started working on way back at the Kickstarter, uh, the idea they had and um, he talks about the program he uses and his idea. They really want to go for a minimalistic, simple, clean UI that doesn't have a lot of junk. It doesn't have all this fancy scroll work or embroidery or lace or whatever the junk it is that they put on uh, some of the UIs that are out there. Um, and then they also have to still figure out exactly what they need the UI to do, how many abilities they're gonna have. I mean, this right here, I think is pretty interesting. Let me pause that for a moment. This was an early iteration that they're, they're not using right now. But if you look at it, it's got the hit points and your magic points, but it broke down the uh, action bar. He had multiple action bars, one for a bow, one for a sword. It looks like on the other side, those are maybe disciplines, one for crafting and one for maybe alchemy which even though this is not the final one they're going with let me pull it ahead here this up here da, 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 is more what the ui is going to look like in the game actually a little further than that even boom there we go this is closer to what the ui actually looks like that they're using now now you see those extra bars are gone right and there's been this big talk about like, oh, how many buttons are we going to have? There's too many and there's too little. And even though this new UI that they're currently using, which looks super slick, by the way, even though they don't have all those extra bars, the thought is still in the head. There's going to be a lot of customization. There's going to be abilities. There's going to be expansion and more places you can put. I don't think this strictly one through zero are going to be the only options that you have. I think it's going to expand a little bit. You might have some more options that, um, but looking at this, I mean, it just looks super clean. Now I'm going to say this and some of you are going to freak out, but I like Apple products. I like Apple phones. I like iPads and stuff because it's super slick. It's super uh, easy to use. It's really straightforward. It's clean design. You know what I mean? Like it, it just works. It's there. It's obvious. And that's what I want my UI to be in game. I want it to work. I want it to be easy to understand. I want it to be quick. I don't want you to get in the way. And that's what this does. I mean, if you look here in the top left hand corner, it shows um, your hero power, your hit points, your magic, your stamina. Um, and then down on the bottom, you can see all the buttons one through zero, your left and right mouse click, but really pretty, very clean, very straightforward, clean UI. And even better than that, at the end of this video, go check it out. At the end of this video, though, it's coming up here. Boom. Check this out. In-game footage. Now, it's still gray box world. Remember, they haven't added the textures, but look at that. You can see, I mean, the leaves moving around and the fire. I think the fire looks amazing. There's like a chest there that's glowing. You can see down at the bottom, there's like a bar. There were two bars. Let me go back and show you this. There's two bars that go by, um, which I think are pretty cool looking. So the first one here, you can see it charges up and there's multiple stages. So this is like your meteor for the, the confessor when you're charging it up. That bar shows you what stage you're at, right? Green and then red, boom, so you know where you're at. And then here's another one, a bar that comes up. This is like, you know, channeling ability or something like that. Um, which I, some of you probably don't care. You're like, it's a UI, I don't give an F. But I think UI is supremely important. And but we also got another look here in game. Now, some people were like, oh my gosh, it's the first person view. Now, um, the, technically it's not a first person view. What they said is they just took the character model. He's like invisible. Normally there'd be like a model in front of you. Um, but 
you should be able to scroll in, I think, and maybe get this. That's another thing. When you press Alt, look at this. They're already building in where you can move UI elements around. Now, uh, if you're used to playing something like World of Warcraft that has a bazillion add-ons, you don't care. This is just standard stuff to you. But there are a lot of games out there that actually don't allow you to do that by default. Um, and there's been some questions about what are they going to allow you to do? Can you have add-ons? What? And they said that... It, what their goal is is to allow you to move stuff around and resize it which to me is the most important i like add-ons but at least let me move stuff where i want it to be and they've already got that in the game and working games like eso don't have that games like you know i mean there's so many games out there that just don't have this functionality which is so annoying and crowfall already has it so go check it out it looks really awesome Next up was the Founders update we got, and a couple important things here. One, they talked about how there's some new upgrade options available. So if you had a package and you wanted to upgrade it, and they've been working on allowing you to do that, so you can do that now. But I think the most important thing is once you unbundle your package, so you have your package, if you go to your account, you can unbundle it, like you apply it, and it breaks the bundle apart. If you do that, you can no longer upgrade. Now, you can contact support and ask them and they might be able to help you out. But in general, don't unbundle your stuff if you want to upgrade it. And you can only upgrade one time. So keep that in mind as well. But this does give you the option to upgrade some stuff for people who have done the Kickstarter and now the 2015 packages. They also said they have new Crowfall t-shirts they're working on. Um, some of you are like, yeah, super excited. They're, they've even shown after this one here, there was another developer post with even more more concept ideas different colors women's uh you know shaped shirts and like all this sort of stuff that we're i think they're working on hats maybe for lake i don't know but uh if you want to get your crowfall swag on this is going to be available either now or in the uh in the shop soon in the in the store soon they're even looking for dealers they can work with over in europe for everybody across the pond so other than that there wasn't a ton of other stuff legal documentation new terms of service current stock offerings that they're working on stuff we've heard before they also give an update um, they've been sending out the newsletters on monday instead of friday um just trying it out to see how it works if you like it or don't like it let them know um but basically t-shirts and last but not least we got to meet a couple of the animators these are the ones who are making all the movements and actions and abilities that we saw in those earlier videos and i really liked this video it was kind of um a little more casual kind of just hey check this out this is what we're working on i think these guys are funny um now it's a lot of like technical stuff there's not any new game information they're not going to show you abilities but if you're interested in this if you like design if you like art if you like um development if you want to get into the game industry all this sort of stuff they show you the uh programs they use they show you how they make it work uh so it's some kind of cool inside information which since we're a part of the kickstarter or you know early development if we bought in a lot of other games don't show you this. They just say, hey, we're working on the game. Here's a screenshot. That's your update for the week. We'll see you later. And because we're a part of the development process, I think it's really fun to see this sort of stuff. I, I've played a lot of games, even in the alpha, but this is the first time that I've seen some of this stuff for the game that I'm going to be playing, which it's really nice to be able to see how that works out. And they show some different iterations of the confessor abilities and things like that um there was also at the end of this video let me scroll ahead here and show it to you uh i don't want you to have to i want to show you myself it's a little teaser where's it at here it is here it is check this guy out this is something new they've been working on which is pretty sweet. That's right. That is the legionnaire in the background. One of his abilities that they've been working on. Look at that. And you can see all the tassels flying around and his legs kicking and this giant polar axe thing he's got. Um, so it looks pretty awesome. Go, go check out that video. There was also a huge developer post here. Techno Mumbo Jumbo, which even goes into more depth on character movement. And they talk about how there's two different kinds of systems that most games use for movement. One is, I forget the name of it, but it's games like World of Warcraft where you push a, you know, like the forward button and your character automatically moves forward and back. And it's really very responsive. And it's what most games use because that's what we're used to. The problem is it doesn't use the physics simulation in the game. So it doesn't, you know, running like 
uphill, faster, slower, water, getting knocked back, all these sorts of things have to be manually coded in to that system to recreate the sensation of physics, right? So it's responsive, but you have to add all this stuff in and do it yourself. The second system isn't as responsive but it uses actual physics so where you're moving forward when you stop moving forward your character kind of slows down and then stops so there's kind of plus and minus of both bunch of techno mumbo jumbo stuff go check it out it's kind of interesting the long and short of it is they're going to use the system that feels the best that works the best and leverages the systems that they already have in place but again if you're interested in all this design stuff you can go check that out as well that's it this week for crowfall insider we got a ton of information and so many videos their new video guy is getting work done so good job on you we gotta look at the confessor and the night animations and even though there's a couple little jerky parts but between the animation transitions. I think they look amazing. I'm super excited. It looks like a game that would come out in 2016. It's smooth, it's fluid, it's uh, very demonstrative where you can see what the character is doing. Every animation doesn't just look the same and boring. It looks amazing, I love it. We also got a 20 minute Q&A video from the developers that's a monthly thing. It's not like one they did for a year or a quarter. It, it, monthly, it, it's great, I love it. So much information there, I wanna see some of this espionage that they're talking about and the destruction they're working on with the voxels. I can't wait. That looks so good. Also, the UI design. I'm so glad they're going with a simplistic, minimalistic design that doesn't get in the way and that you can move and resize by default. Also, the founders update. Get your t-shirts and also all that animation techno mumbo jumbo. I'll have a link for everything we talked about down in the description below. Make sure you hit that like, share, and follow. Thank you so much and I will see you next time.